in life will be plans. But the plan of God will write the plan of man. Amen. Amen. In most of us in this room have plans. And I'll be disappointed and very surprised if you're here this morning and you don't have a plan. Amen, church. Amen. If you don't have a plan, if you're here this morning and you don't have a plan, there's no prayer that can save you. There's no prayer that can deliver you. You are doomed for failure. Because anyone that doesn't have a plan has always been destined to fail. If you don't have a plan, you are destined for failure. There's no prayer that can deliver you. There's no anointing oil that can save you. No lay of hands, no prophet, no prophecy that can save you. Because you have failed to have a plan. Amen, church. Amen. I need your attention if you're looking here and then you're buying and selling. Focus on what I'm saying. Don't look anywhere else. Let's focus on the word. So it's important that, that you have a plan. Amen. And as you already know, there are plans that sometimes you put in place that do not work. I have planned many plans in my life, in my very short life. I have planned many plans. There are plans I've had to replan again because the plan did not work. There's nothing wrong with your plan failing. There's everything wrong with you not having a plan. And when you plan and the plan fails and you refuse to have another plan, then you fall into the cycle of failure because the plan did not work anymore. Now, this morning, by the grace of God, last week we talked about, we talked about, um,
what he wanted to achieve in his life. Don't forget, everyone has got what they need to achieve, whatever they need to achieve in life. That's my belief. And I always put that scripture, God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory. So I am born with the supply to achieve. That is my motto. It's not going to change. What you don't have, you don't need. What you don't have, you don't need. Because God does not fail. Amen, church? Amen. What you don't have, you don't? Amen. What I don't have, I don't? Amen. No, say, what I don't have, I don't? Amen. Whatever you don't have, you don't need it. Whatever you need, you already have. Whatever you need, you already have it. But some might not find it. Because what you, what you look for is what you find. Whatever you don't look for, you will never find it. And so Joseph had a dream. His brothers were not very happy about the dream. And they hated him even more. If you go down, if it, but it was one night. Now, every one of us are not bound or said to have a dream upon the same day. This life is a journey. Amen, church? Amen. You're not contesting, you're not competing with anybody in this room. Church, amen? Amen. 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 We're not competing. It's a journey for everyone here. So you don't have to have a dream because I had a dream. We don't have to have a dream on the same day. He had a dream on a particular night. Your dream could be on a different night. Your dream could be two nights away, three nights away. The most important thing is you must have a dream. What is important and key and pivotal is that you must have a dream. You must dream your own dream. If you don't have a dream, you ain't going nowhere. You're not going to go anywhere. You know what? People that don't have vision, you know what happens? People that have, don't have any vision, what happens? We use them to fulfill their vision. When you don't have where you are going, people will make you follow them to where they are going. Hear me, church. If you don't have a destination, people will make you follow you then to their own destination. If you don't have a plan, others will wrap you into their plan. That is simple mathematics in life. Your friends or make will use you to their own end when you don't have a dream. But Joseph, as a teenager, at the age of 17, he had a dream. And he told it to them. And they hated him even more. And what is interesting is, his brothers responded, so you think in verse 8, you will be our king? Do you? You already actually think you will reign over us? And they hated him all the more because of his dreams and the way he talked about them. He was proud. He was, he was actually talking about it with passion. He was passionate. He was passionate about his dream. Soon Joseph had another dream. Some translation says he, he dreamt again. Somebody he dreamt again. Come on, church, he dreamt again. They tried to kill his dream. His dream. They tried to really put his dream because his dream did not make sense. How can you become king over us? How do you expect us to bow before you? You know how you have a vision for your life and you're aspiring for greatness and you tell people around and they start laughing at you. How can you? Do you know how many times people have laughed at me in my life? When I've said something, they say, you, how? It's like, they said, don't you know where you're coming from? They said to you, in your village, how many people have achieved, have achieved such things in your village? How many people have reached that mark? They ask you questions, they take you back to your roots. They tell you you cannot achieve this and that because of where you're coming from, because you are limited in, in, in you are limited by your environment, you are limited by your family status, you are limited by your financial status, you are limited by your educational status. They tell you oh, why you cannot achieve it. And before you know what's happening, your dream begins to die. That dream, you were so excited about it, but you told it. And then begin to feed you all kinds of negative things. Because you know what? There are many people around you that don't want you to become higher than them and bigger than them. They don't want you to. How many people actually, in your, in, among your pair of friends, maybe in the office, you get, you get become promoted as a manager and now you have to manage them. <laughs> when I had to become a manager, when, when, when I walked, they had to move me from that location. But it does not become hard for me to manage those I was at the same level with. They had to change my location. It was difficult. One for them to accept me as their manager. But God lifted me up above them. They had to relocate me because it was difficult for them to accept me.
capacity. It is very hard. When God lifts you up above your peers, they might celebrate you and say, oh, congratulations. But deep inside, they're thinking, why not me? Why he? Why is he always hard? Why is she always getting ahead of me? Why is she the one that's always been selected? Deep inside, maybe it's human nature. Some I say, oh, pastor, it's human nature to feel like this. But somehow, there's a bit of animosity. There's sometimes there's a bit of animosity. Within our celebration, there's a bit of unhappiness about the fact that you were selected. But he had a dream. He had a dream. And that dream was, was big. Child of God, what you can't see, you can't get. I only see this.
programmed. And that's how God is a programmed. When you get ahead of them, and again, you got promoted, but not everybody got promoted. You get your double salary, you know, okay, what's going on? And the human nature, the demonic nature, it sets in, and they want to become very negative towards you. But we have to be careful, church. We've got to be careful, thank you very much. You have to be careful. Now, my emphasis this morning is this. Joseph had to dream again. I don't know what dream you had growing up. If you already grown up. I don't know what dream you had. You are having right now. Your dream will be challenged. Your dream will be tested. Your vision, your passion, it will be tested. It's not just going to happen like that. I don't know when we get this quick, uh, quick fix prayer. I, I, I believe in prayers, but there's no quick fix prayer. This morning, I told some people in this room this morning. I said, if you are lazy, God, I said, no matter how what you do, if you are lazy, you pray God, you don't have prayer. Even your girl, God, that person is lazy. The Bible said, the lazy man don't know the road to the city. It says in the Bible, that the lazy man don't know the road to the city. We have so many lazy Christians, mental lazy. You see, they use prayer to cover up. They are mentally lazy. Mentally lazy. So what they do instead of actually meditating and thinking and reflecting and doing calculations of their brain. There is a place of prayer. There is a place for you to sit down and articulate things. There is a place for you to sit down and apply your brain. God didn't give us brain for nothing. It's not prayer, not the prayer answer, the prayer answer. Yes. Prayer answers all things in perspective. Pray blindly, stay at home. You don't have a job. Keep praying. Let me see how you're going to get a job. Do not apply for work. Be praying. Be praying. You want more salary? Be praying. You're not developing your front. You're not improving yourself. You're not improving your CV. You're not actually topping up your degree. You want more money. How? You want to wake up and say, money on your pillow. You think God gives you for a, 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 a pounds? There's no pounds in heaven. God will not interfere with any currency. God will give you opportunity. But if you're not prepared for opportunity, you will fail. Don't say amen. <laughs> but you will fail. Lazy people. Look, I have no problem with prayers. Get me right? I don't believe you will pray continuously with that. Who's going to go to work now? My church in Nigeria. They say, don't go and pray in the morning. I say, what? You want to be praying in the morning? Early in the morning. Men are going to work. You can't do that. If you can't come and pray in the morning, they are told you pray for money till afternoon. Pray. Don't you have work? It's not going to feed you. So that's you will pray. Others go to work and pray that they feed you. No way. Hear me, church. This is it. We have, we've come to the end of 2023 by the grace of God. We're coming to the end. We're wrapping up now. <laughs> if you want to get ahead, you must have the mentality of getting ahead. If you want to go to the next level, you must prepare yourself. There's no pain, there's no pain. Say what? 
said, cast the net. Because Jesus could have gone on the wife. He would have said, close your eyes and open the eyes of fish everywhere. But he said, cast the net. There's a place for work. There's a place for due diligence. There's a place for action. It is what you do that God will bless. If you do nothing, God will bless nothing. Let's not fool ourselves. We want to aspire to greater height. We want to do something. We want to start something. But I say, do not despite the things of small beginning. Do no matter how you do. Dream again. Dream, dream, keep dreaming. They will laugh at you. Dream. The men who said that one day we'll see them fly in the sky. They had a dream that one day there will be aeroplanes. Something called the aeroplane. Imagine how people are looking at them in those days. When they start trying to talk to the idea of cars on the road, somebody's coming and saying, we'll be flying. You know, every time I get in the air, I'm thinking, why? When I get into the plane and the plane's in the air, I'm thinking, we didn't have to be. I ask myself that question. I say, how can a human be like me? Sit down and do so much, man, and do so many things, and this thing will take up and fly from here to my village. I think, yeah. It brings cheap and I tell you, I'm still baffled by those. Who in the village? Who in this town? He said there's a guy in prison. Listen, 
your gift to speak for you. You are saying your gift to speak for you. There is a man in prison. He has been telling dreams. They bring him for you. And they went and fetched him. Please. If you don't have the job of your dream, keep preparing yourself for that job. Keep getting qualifications. Keep training. One day, you'll be looking for somebody. And somebody, God, will locate you. God will send somebody that will remember you. Your day of remembrance will come. They'll say, I know that guy. He's good at this. He's good at that. Be diligent wherever you find yourself. God will always watch you. You know who's looking? He knows you are coming in prison. I think come and tell us how reason you know you have to pay me. What are you talking about? What do you have to pay me? It's cost to intervene to himself. You want to charge them and they can't pay. Well, he gave them the dream. He told them the dream. And when the time was right, one of those people said, there's somebody who told me about the dream. Don't undermine anybody. Don't look down on anybody. Anyone around you could be the person God's going to use to lift you up. Don't look down on anybody. You don't have anything. But there may be that person that God's going to use to talk to somebody about you. And they took him there and he told the dream. And you know the rest of the story. He ascended. He was diligent through the whole course of the journey. And eventually he reached the place. He had a dream. But that dream didn't come easy. He dreamt again. It didn't come that easy. Just imagine. If God had shown him everything he had to pass through to get to that place, he would have told God, you know what? I'm okay here in my father's house. I like my coat of many colors. I don't need to tell my brother about a dream. Let us, let, 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 let us be in peace. When a dream comes challenges. If you dream high, if you dream big, there'll be bigger challenges. If you're not having challenges right now, your dream is too small. I'm telling you, your dream is too small. Dream bigger. Don't come and tell me the Bible says I shall be the head and not be the tail. Excuse me. You shall be the head and not be the tail when you're sitting down there. How can you sit down and be the head? You must stand and stand tall. You must stand and stand above everyone else. You must do extra work. There's no extra work. There's no extraordinary. You cannot stand out for all you're doing is doing the same as everybody else. You cannot. There's no prayer. The man that invented the aeroplane, he wasn't praying. I don't even know if he was born again. I don't even know if he was born again. The man invented the car. Was he born again? The man that invented the cell phone. Is he born again? All these born, born again people. Born again children of God with Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Advanced spirituality. You have advanced certificate in spiritual conquest. You have this in demonology. You have this in, 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 in dealing with demons, killing demons. And, excuse me, church of God. The God you don't go to become a demon slayer. No! You are a child of God. Demons fear you. You carry the fire of God. If you're on fire, demons will not near you. They will try. But child of God, I tell you again, no devil, no wizard, no wizard can touch you without the expert permission of God. And when God allows them, God will give them restitution parameters. He will give them parameters. If you fail, because you want to fail. If you fall, because you wanted to fall. You are already planning to fall for the push. You were planning it. James says it. Your desire is what consumes you. I ran up here. Please, church, dream again. Hey, dream again. I don't know what has happened to you. I don't know what has been happening to you. But you remember the dream you had. Please, don't allow the things event in this life steal that dream. Don't let it go. You can achieve it. Don't just come and tell me, Pastor, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, through Christ who empowers me. You are not saying it, you are not doing it. I'm fed up. With those people merely speaking the word, not living the word. Very few are living the word. Very few are seeing the result of the word. Enough is enough. Enough of the talking. I want action. God wants action. Heaven wants action. Begin to plan it. As you begin to round up this year and plan to step into the new year, somebody saying, Yes, this one is mine. I am not a mediocre. I'm not settling for average. I'm the best of what you get to see. I'm emerging. I'm coming out. I'll be celebrated. God is setting a platform for me to be celebrated. Amen. My award is coming. My award of greatness. 
great placement. Blow out your head. Let's pray. Now we pray. Now we pray. Now we pray. Somebody's waking up inside you. A hunger. A desire. A passion. Anger. Hey. You are too quiet. You are too soft. You are too laid back. You are too careless. You are not saying you hunger. You are hunger. You are not saying God how hungry you are.